And we have here for round one of the World Magic Cup qualifier, Ray Perez Jr. on your left, Paul Schutte on your right. I'm Adrian Sullivan here with Brian Kowal. This is Blue White from Ray Perez Jr. versus Paul Schutte with Rabble Red. Looks like they're getting off to a very fast start. They're like, played those first two turns very quickly. Um, we have Paul Schutte already on the board with the Foundry Street Denizen and I, uh, Ray, Ray who went first, uh, two, just two lands. The Foundry Street Dinos, and now a 2-1 coming on in. I think we see a fumble to Zorius Charm, but it still does the work of going on top for that 2-1 Foundry Street Denizen. No other damage coming. Ray on taps. Third land. Lots of choices. Most of them come into play tapped. Hmm. Paul only using uh, one of his mana on his turn. I, I, I think that might be a little rough if you're a red aggro deck. Need a Rabble Master here to make things go great. He does have the Rabble Master. Boom, that's triggering once. It's triggering twice. And we're going to see a 3-1 plus a 1-1 one, one come on in. And Ray just has to take it. Now, sometimes people forget about the other ability of the Rabble Master. When it attacks, it gets to get pumped up for all of the goblins that it's coming in with. So that's a lot of damage that could show up next turn. Yeah, quite a bit. And it's going to be... Pumping the Foundry Seed Denizen, too, but uh, not for long because Ray does have the Supreme Verdict wiping away Paul's entire team. And let's refill. Foundry Street Denizen, go. Not exciting for Paul Schutte. Yeah, not, not a big second salvo here. The score's here 16 for Ray, only barely touched, and he's at five mana. This is bad news for Paul Schutte. Yeah, I th I th Ray's just going to sit back. With has a mana vault to block if he doesn't pl play a red creature. Paul can't even attack. Ash Zealot joins on in. Mm -hmm. Quicken. Oh boy, are we going to see it? Yeah, yeah, he does have that second Supreme Verdict. Cool. Wiping the team again. Ray, uh, ve very comfortable at 16 life here. I mean, if you're Ray Perez Jr., you know that this style of matchup is one of the most difficult ones. In mm -hmm. fact, one of the ones that might scare you away from playing this kind of archetype. Being at 16 life, you basically have to be thanking your lucky stars, <laughs> feeling pretty good about things to be at this stage in game one. Yeah, because this, this is a predator for the blue-white deck, right, in general? Yeah, in general. Here we have it, a cackler. And yeah. syncopate. Paul, Paul, he, Paul's on about two cards right now in his hand, and he just played a fifth land. I, I don't see this, uh, don't see him coming out of this. So, like, what, what can he really draw here? Uh, to get back in. Maybe like, maybe like running Rabble Masters. Um. I think it's going to take a lot of air in uh, Ray Perez. He's just cast Divination. And I see there what looks like land another Divination. Yep, there it mm -hmm. is. And he's going for even more cards. And I think yep. he's just picked up some more actual action in the form of Elspeth for next turn. That Elspeth's probably going to come down pretty quickly, right? It, it, it doesn't seem like uh, he has to stabilize at all anymore. Um, yeah, I think he has turned the corner. One of the things about the Rabble Red decks, most of them do not run much in the way of reach. Um, looks like this one is running four Stoke the Flames, three Lightning Strike. That's kind of what we've seen normally for these lists. And then Rebel Belt Maka and Hall of Triumph for Pump. But Pump does not do very well against Elspeth. In general, you've got so many soldiers that it's going to take a lot of effort for Paul Schutte to be able to come through this. Oh, mm -hmm. look at that adorable bunny rabbits. So at, th at this point, uh, Paul, I'm like, okay, he's there we obviously go. scooping. But. Okay, and Paul <laughs> decides that that is enough. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things about this matchup, you know, the, the matchup often comes down to either just winning in that first initial rush or at least getting them low enough that Stoke the Flames, Lightning Strike, that... You'll be able to use one or two of those spells to get off that last four, seven, eight damage. Now, one of the things that's at stake this weekend at the World Magic Cup qualifiers is the Team USA. Already we've got the captain, Team Captain Owen Turtenwald, Milwaukee Zone. Milwaukee Zone. <laughs> and we have one winner already. That was out on the West Coast playing Rabble Red. And that is Isaac Sears. Yeah, he's played the same deck you're seeing on the right. Uh, he managed to take down the last qualifier with. So probably wait a little into Paul's decision to play. 
I mean, this is a really excellent deck just in general. One of the things about Rabble Red, Rabble Red was not just the most successful red deck at Pro Tour M15. It was one of the most successful archetypes of the event at large. The amount of people that did well with it was in very impressive. Mm -hmm. Ray was at a very fortunate first game as well. Like it, the, the two uh, double supreme verdict is right where you want to be against that deck. Yeah. Well, particularly um, with Paul having kind of a lackluster start, if you're just joining us and you missed the first few turns of that very quick blue-white on red game, normally a quick game would mean red wins, but in this case, red came out a little slow. Ray pushed it back a little bit with a single Azorius charm and then mm -hmm. went verdict into quick and supreme verdict and then just never really felt any pressure. Elspeth for the win, super quick, over in minutes. Yep, very very fast, very clean work on Ray's side. I think it was that turn seven, Elspeth, probably. <laughs> I think so. I think so. And uh, the thing that we're going to see now is sideboarding. How much do these decks care about each other? Well, one of the things, looking at the uh, sideboard of Paul Shute. Well, we see... Shooty, pardon me. Yeah. We see Dyna Charge. I think that probably comes in just to shorten, shorten the game up. Um, just increases goldfish because he's he's basically just his plan is like well hope hope he doesn't handle my stuff fast enough I just it just got to close the game out as fast as possible like every turn that goes past around turn five is just gonna weigh more and more in Ray's favor um, I I can see even the Titan Strengths coming in here he has two Titan Strengths two Dyna Charges um, and and a Hall of Triumph like. Can definitely see that also helping out. Yeah, I know uh, there's a one card in the sideboard, Eidolon of the Great Revelry, that a lot of players have mixed opinions on when it comes to this blue-white match, because after all, it does really hurt Last Breaths, Quick and Azorius Charms, and on the other hand, it doesn't really hit very hard and on its own, so a Supreme Verdict can wipe it away. Just yesterday at the um, 1K here, the TCG player 1K, I heard several players playing Rabble Red arguing whether or not Eidolon was any good versus Blue White. Yeah, on, uh, yeah I'm, not, I'm not so sure it, it helps them that much when, when their answer it doesn't even deal damage to them. You know, uh, it, it, it could just be a, a grizzly bear, right? Like for all intents and purposes. But bears have been known to do a lot of damage over time. I'm not mm. sure what the answer is either. When we go to Ray's side of the board, he has some pretty obvious cards he's going to be bringing in. Four Nyx Fleece Ram, two Archangel of Thune. Those are pretty easy choices. Now, one of the other cards that is of interest is he does have, and this was a card that might seem a little strange, but Dispel is a card I've seen people bring in against Rabble Red just for that reach at the end. Most of the counter spells that you'd want to run um, in the main deck are just too slow for Rabble Red. Your Dissolves, your Syncopates, they're right. super slow. And the thing is, is you don't have your opponent's deck list in front of you. Having one blue open to stop something you know, like a skull crack when you're casting one of your revelations. Mm -hmm. Even though there are no skull cracks in Paul Shooty's sideboard, some players do run it. And then besides that, there always are going to be their Stoke the Flames, probably going to be Lightning Strikes. And we know that there's also um, access to other instants as well. So I wouldn't be surprised to see most of the, si the counter spells go away and a Dispel come in, along with all of that life gain. Yeah, I like a dispel. I, I love a counter spell that you can just kind of like go about business as usual and still keep up. You know, like it's not it's not that hard to keep that one blue up a lot of the time. Now, if you want to uh, reach out to any of us on Twitter, the hashtag WMCQ. I know I'm looking at it, so feel free to use that hashtag WMCQ. Other players that are here at the event are also using that hashtag, letting everybody know how they're doing, and. We see right now the player on the left, Ray Perez Jr., up a game. Paul Schutte on the right. This is round one of the World Magic Cup qualifier. Who will join our captain, Owen Turtenwald, and Isaac Sears, the first World Magic Cup qualifier winner? Looks like Ray's starting at 25. I saw the uh, one of your favorite cards in blue-white, Elixir of Mortality, in his opening hand. <laughs> <laughs> now... A lot of people I know when they see Elixir of Immortality think, oh, it's just going to be, you know, in this kind of matchup, it's just going to be five life. You're not going to get to the point where you're recycling it. To me, I'm fine with spending three mana to get five life in this kind of matchup. There's 
so much opportunity to uh, have your opponent just do such a crazy amount of damage, even if it's just kind of like a bad fog. It's a bad fog that gets me to a supreme verdict. Right. I mean, I think I think when you play against red, you're going to pay three mana for five life anytime. <laughs> now, Paul Schutte, one of the things that happened in that first game, he just kind of came out a little slow. This is a deck with only 21 land and basically um, 30 two creatures, so it's kind of an unfortunate yeah. start for him. Yeah, I think he drew six, five or six, and like, none of them were Mutavaults. Like, Mutavaults will like, help take care of like that problem sometimes. Oh, we're starting. Um, Paul has his one drop already with the Rakdos Cackler, Cackler, obviously unleashing it to make it a 2-2. Two -two. And we see that turn one Elixir of Immortality. I think... We're going, there we go. All draws, Le brings a Legion Le Loyalist, attacking for three on turn two. Not bad. Now, the Legion Loyalist is a card that might have helped him um, if he had anything else going versus an Elspeth. Certainly, uh, one, of its, one of its abilities, it, gets to, it makes tokens unable to block when it attacks. Second land here, both planes. I wonder if we're seeing any color problems here. Well, Paul's color problem is he doesn't have a second red source, or a second land even. <laughs> Paul untaps. Three power currently on the board. So there's that second mountain he needs. Mm -hmm. And Ray, Ray knows now Paul's hand's probably just full of gas. Ray's hand has a last breath in it. Ash sell it. Five power on the table now. <laughs> Away they go. Did Paul mulligan? He did mulligan. Paul is down to, he was mulligan to six cards. Ray Perez Jr. says no thank you to the Ash Zealot. Paul going up to 24 life. Ray drops three more life. Yeah, Ray has no blue mana, it looks like. I mean, who needs and it? I, I see the detention sphere in his hand he'd probably like to cast. <laughs> <laughs> I see a lot of gold cards in Ray's hand. Oh, it's a Hall of Triumph. This is a great card as a means to help kind of stem the bleeding when it comes to uh, things like Supreme Verdict. Your creatures all hit a little harder, so even if you verdicted it away, the Hall is still there, and the next creature will be a little bit bigger as well. We have that hit there yeah. for a total of five. That, I believe, is basically fogged by the Elixir. And Paul Schutte at 24, Ray Perez at 14, looking for a blue source doesn't find it yeah the, the, the hall is just a great card like it, it, it lets him not have to extend more either so he just keep more threats in his hand like he, if he has a rival master I don't, i'm not sure he even has to play it i mean he might play it here just because he's you know stuck at colored mana there's five more damage and then a foundry street denizen this is threatening seven damage ray stuck mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't see Ray living through this. Down to two. Strike. Strike. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so obviously we can see one of the uh, problems for any deck that is playing against an opponent that is running less colors than them. If you're only playing one color, all you got to do is draw any mana. <laughs> you know? When it comes to, uh, as long as you're not, you know, Mutavault flooded, that can happen. But you can just draw any land and it works. Ray had three lands. It looked like he had at least two detention spheres in his hand. He could have been knocking out creatures, but instead all planes just stuck while Paul Schutte basically attacks him like he was helpless. Well, when you play aggressive decks, uh, the natural entropy of magic, you know, the, the randomness of magic is always plays in your favor a little bit more. You know, anything that goes wrong for your opponent just e equals uh, extra percentage points for you to win that game. Yeah, one, one of the things that I think uh, was really important that I had heard from, uh, from Bob Maher not so long ago is he said that, you know, why he didn't like blue-white control, it's that you get your opening hand and you have to keep on drawing stuff for your opening hand to even be good. Right. And in a red deck, you look at your opening hand, and it might just be good even if you happen to never draw another card. Yeah, I think, um, was, it, was that uh, Patrick Sullivan saying, like, like so, somebody talking about eager decks, like, like they, they, they like them because they see their hand, they, they know how their game's going to go, <laughs> you know. Control decks, I remember uh, testing a lot with, like, uh, like, great control players like Patrick Chapin, just like. 
So if you are um, have been tuning in, there's more events that are coming up. We've got the TCG Player Diamond event, the $5,000 open on the 6th of September. A few weeks later, these are all pastimes.net events, the cons of Tarkir pre-release extravaganza, and that's the 20th and 21st, followed by a TCG Player Gold event, which is played modern, and that's on the 27th. And then finally, right at the end of September at Pastimes, the MT the League Season 2. Check out the website www.pastimes.net. Yeah, I know like, like control players like almost always say just never mulligan, almost anything, you know, like it's two lands, we're good to go. And like aggro players, I, I find are always like very more apt to like just go to six or even five to make sure their hand does something. Now, Ray Perez Jr., I believe, is a player from the Michigan area, and uh, he had a pretty good run the last couple of years doing some PTQ winning and uh, getting there to the Pro Tour. I think that he would love to be back on the big stage again via this World Magic Cup qualifier. Um, I don't know Paul Schutte, but just the way that he ended up playing out, obviously that first game, I felt like uh, we didn't really get a chance to, to see you know, his skill one way or another. He just ended up having a little bit of a lackluster start and then an incredible defense from Ray Perez. And then in game two, Ray Perez kind of just sat there while uh, the red guys hit him. Yeah, when, when you get flooded, it, it, it takes a lot of play out of your deck. <laughs> 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 or Mattis screwed, for that matter. Okay, in uh, Paul Schutte's hand, there's some lands. I think a Legion Loyalist. I think an Ash Sellet. Um, and Ray is going down a card. Mulligan didn't like that first hand. Now, Ray's uh, list, we saw he had three planes in play before. One of the things that Ray is doing is he's playing the full eight cards that are the, the normal blue-white cards that people play. Temple of Enlightenment, Four Hallowed Fountain. And then a lot of people sometimes dip into off-color temples in order to finish out their mana. Ray, in fact, ignored the temples and went with guild gates. It actually was more important to him to have that mana consistency. Mm. Unfortunately for him, even though he made that choice, it doesn't necessarily mean that it comes up. Yeah, it didn't quite pay off for him that last game. It's, that's just the nature. We're shuffling cards. Yeah. If you can't handle that kind of thing, then you should uh, consider playing. I yeah. don't know. He has 17 sources of each color, so it should be, it should got, be plenty for he's him. He's got a lot. <laughs> Okay, and Paul is ready. Ray down to six cards. Paul giving his deck a last little shuffle. And let's see if Ray is going to have to uh, toss him back once more. A couple of planes. Planes, planes, here. Last breath. Last there we go. We got a blue source. That actually looks like a very decent hand. No. Oh. <laughs> Peekaboo. Giving up the ghost. <laughs> Well, Paul knows that cards exist. Yeah. <laughs> <It> exists. <laughs> if I'm Paul, I'm just like, yeah, if you get there, like, <laughs> it's probably over. Fire Drinker Seder, one of the best Ryan cards Strow for Strow Paul Strow to Strow drop on turn one. And the better Jackal Pup. <laughs> I think we might just see this last breath immediately. There it is. Paul Shooty up to 24. Yeah, you run into an awkward situation if you don't last breath right away because he, he can just pump it and keep it from happening. And Ash sell it. Yep, there it is. In for two, 18 to 24. And we see that detention sphere there and a supreme verdict. Yep, that's the big one he wants. And he's got access to in his hand and between in hand and in play at least two of each color. That means all of his early plays, his Jaces, his Supreme Verdicts, he can cast every one of his early spells at this point now. Yeah, we have, we have smooth sailing on the mat of this game. Now obviously, right now the question is Detention Sphere or no. He does go for it right now. Rather than try to get more card advantage, he's just thinking, my life yeah. total matters more than maybe getting one more card. Is that the same direction you would have went there? I think that that's very reasonable. You can't mess around with this deck. It's going to be able to deploy a lot no matter what you do. So you just have to expect that if you don't protect your life total, you might not get a chance to protect it later. And we see four damage right away from that. Yep, he's 
plays his uh, up, upgraded Rage, Raging Goblin and uh, Titan strings it up for four extra. I think he just drew a Jace, which means he has a choice here between Supreme Verdict and Jace. The Jace with a plus here could be very good. Boom, look at that. Now we've got a basically an anemic little goblin and what will be a 1-2 Burning Tree Emissary. So Paul Schutte is in the unfortunate situation that he's going to have to do more in order to even force something to go wrong, go on. He's only got one damage from this attack. Yeah, this is a this is a great play on Ray's part because he, yeah, he, he's just forcing him to commit more to the board. He has a supreme verdict back, and he's just getting like more and more card advantage yeah. out of his spells. Now we'll find out what he's attacking. Personally, if I'm Paul, I attack Ray here. And he does. Paul hits Ray for one, and the Supreme Verdict here is going to be backbreaking. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing where you can, yep, he's perfect. What he's doing, he's like, maybe I'm looking for a verdict. Maybe that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I hope Paul's not falling for that. We got a Nyx Fleece <laughs> Ram, a Quicken, and a Land. And he splits away the Ram. In this situation, I think I like the Ram over the two cards, honestly. And do you pay two for Hallowed Fountain? Like, <laughs> see if he can to put a little more on the board? Like, yep, maybe I don't have this. Uh. Okay. <laughs> and he goes with the Land and the Quicken. I guess he doesn't kick up then. There we go. And then Land number five. Oh, he yeah. had no other Land in his hand. I thought he had one Land in his hand. That leaves him empty of Land. Yeah. That's a Jace, a... Paul uh, Paul's in... Unfortunately, forced to play that rabble master. He had no other action in his hand. Um, but otherwise, I would have like definitely tried to save the rabble master for a follow-up play after a verdict. And uh, we see a draw of an island from Ray Perez, and he says minus again. Lands thinks his rev verdict. Ouch! That is a pretty devastating set of cards. Yeah, there. This, this is pretty much the most brutal thing that can happen <laughs> to Paul here. Now Ray Perez already has the one land in his hand. He's got Quicken. He's got another Jace. He's got two Sphinx's Revelations. All the cards. All the cards he could possibly want. And he does a main phase Sphinx for three. Do you have a crack? He does not know there are no skull cracks in uh, Paul Schutte's list. And that's a land, a land. And was that a third Sphinx's Rev? I thought that was an Azorius Charm, okay. but it might have been. And there we go, dead Jace, and a fifth land. Paul Schutte not really wanting five lands right now. If he could turn in two of them into spells, I'm sure he would do that for 12 life. <laughs> maybe, maybe for 20 life. We see another temple hit the table. Card goes to the bottom. I think we're going to see Jace. Yeah, Paul's close to a third of the lands in his deck in play right now. and uh... There it is, Jace, plus one go. Foundry Street Denison basically is sitting there Unhappy. <laughs> Rakdos Cackler makes it a 2-1. Attacks as a 1-1. One, one. Ray still with a revelation in hand. And you're right, that was an Azorius charm. Yeah, it's a lot of work for one point of damage. Oh, boy. Elixir. And up it goes. Another temple. Does a little think. To the bottom. Yeah, Ray in the driver's seat from here. It's yeah. Elixir. Paul Schutte. Things are looking pretty grim. Attacks for only one. Azorius Charm puts it back on top. That's pretty devastating, honestly. And that will that will let Paul attack for one next turn. <laughs> <laughs> Ray really wanted that to spell. He, uh, he did indeed board it in. And we see a plus on the Jace. Up Under to 16 counters. <laughs> Under no threat here. He's got a dispel in hand against any potential skull crack. And he does keep that mana open just in case there's a skull crack in the mix. That's four cards. Ray at 19 now. Nyx Fleece Ram land, land, and... I couldn't see the last draw, and then he lays that Nixley's Ram. I think it barely matters. <laughs> <laughs> and we see the Cackler back down. Pumped 
go. Yep. It's be hard to get through that zero five. Beyond game beyond the one life per turn, it's uh, stops his entire team with the Jace. Gains a life, pluses the Jace, Sphinx's Rev in hand, Dispel in hand, more mana, another Nyx Fleece Ram. Put a little herd together. I mean, What's a group of rams called? I will call it a herd All because right. I've been watching The Walking Dead a lot. <laughs> Okay, we've got an attack here for almost nothing. And he blocks and blocks just in case of possible shenanigans. Titan Strength has already been cast this game. And so no damage gets through to anything. The Rams live untapped by Ray. Ray, with the ability to go ultimate, has drawn an Archangel of Thune as uh, well. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, goodbye, Jace. Hello, maybe Archangel, maybe Elspeth. And then from his opponent's side, my guess is he's going to get a Hall of Triumph on white. Seems likely. <laughs> he could get a Mutavolt. No, I'm not sure. Um, I think it's Hall of Triumph that's uh, maybe what he's going to get. Maybe an Eidolon of Great Revels just to <laughs> speed the clock up a little. <laughs> <laughs> it's Flock of, flock of Rams. Uh, right. We are Red, being Red. told that um, the Rams are sheep. Oh. Okay. So is a flock of Rams. There we go. And Archangel is uh, summoned via the Jace. And there it is, the Hall of Triumph. I wonder what color he will name. He's going to name White Adrian. Ah, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's yeah. actually pretty cool about this moment is that he can start the beatdown now with those two rams. Yeah. <laughs> and the elixir, once he casts the second angel, if he does it, he can sacrifice the elixir to really end up pumping up everybody. I hope he does it. Sacrifice the elixir. Oh, and he's got uh, the sphinx. Oh, there we go. There's the elixir. Okay. Paul, Paul shoot dead next turn. Bunch of, bunch of triggers. <laughs> So these rams are going to be able to hit for six. <laughs> yeah. It's only four. Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah, he has the artifact as well. That's uh, two tokens on each of those. And then remember, they're biggerized by the Hall of Triumph. Okay. Are, are you going to just stroke for one with that? Uh, do it, do it. Ah, uh, come on, Ray. <laughs> In for six. He could have attacked for eight. It's like cycle, cycle his Sphinx's Revolution for two extra damage. Hey, I'm not saying it's rational. I'm <laughs> talking about the funsies now. <laughs> and Burning Tree Emissary and a Handshake. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that was, was a brutal game three. Yeah, was <laughs> wow. We can see uh, Ray with a uh, a smile there, moving yeah, death. ever closer to uh, a hopeful trophy for Ray. Who doesn't love death by Ram? Meanwhile, on the other bracket, we appear to have a very different matchup. It's well, not a hundred percent different. Mike Burnett, Michael Burnett, also playing blue white, but his opponent playing a red blue control deck Ooh. with Jace. With Chandra, with Rawls Zarek, a full counterspell suite. Um, One Chandra's Phoenix, huh? I was telling you, I was I was, I was bre brewing the last couple of days a uh, Naya Planeswalker deck with Chandra's Phoenix. Everybody's laughing at me. So <laughs> in the sideboard, he's got three more Chandra's Phoenix. So that's four Chandra's Phoenix. Access to Jace Memory Adept negates Aetherling. This is actually a very, like, I think frightening deck for a blue-white deck after sideboard. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to play against this. We've got, uh, let's see, uh, Chandra's Phoenix, Mutavolt, and Omen Speaker on the attack. How about we Azorius Charm, one of the... Uh, <laughs> what do you got over there? I see a Sphinx's Revelation. We see it's being shot off here for a great amount of mana. Does that resolve? We'll find out shortly. Yeah, this is a nice little brew Jake Koenig's got here. And it does resolve. This brings Michael Burnett up to 10, I believe. 
And uh, yeah, I mean, this deck looks actually scary. He's got counter flux. Oh boy. I think we just saw the end despite that Sphinx's revelation. Ral Zarek plus dissolve to protect it and the damage that was on the table. Is that the match? Wow, so we just only saw the end of this uh, kind of exciting. Look at the smile from Jake. He had a nice big smile there. It's got to be fun to beat an experienced player like Michael Bernat when you are playing something that is this awesome.